Okay guys, let's give you a quick tour on all generations of 911, alright? Because this is not the first car that Porsche makes. Porsche started off with a 356, alright? So I'll give you a good look, and those are the classic wheels, look at them. Very good looking classic wheels. Alright, now these cars, they are by no means fast. Back in those era, okay. But, ah, okay, remember this. Later when I go through all the generations, do remember this whole horizontal looking dash with the five dials over there. Okay, remember this theme because it is consistent over the years, right? See this little batch over here? Very nice. And the smell of the leather, very nice. Okay, these grills at the back. Oh, look at that. Wonderful looking. Rally Monte Carlo. Oh, the font. This is timeless, this font design. Okay, very, very nice. Hey, <laughs> look at the, the runners for rainwater. It's right there. Right, so they built this right there. You know, the rainwater will come and then these runners will let the water run down. Interesting. Lovely. Pristine, right? The bodywork. So nice. I'll tell you all a little bit of trivia about this. You know, at the time, Ferry Porsche was selling cars to United States. And then one of the dealer with him during lunch, he was like, you know what? You need a batch. You need some batch for your car for the 356. And uh, Ferry Porsche just took out the, uh, the serviette on the table and straight away he used his pen and draw this logo out. Yeah. So some of it is their family crest, some of it has to do with Stuttgart. And one thing you may not know, the horse on Porsches is female. Right? Not a stallion. Interesting. So oh, look at these. <laughs> this looks like those US spec bumpers. <coughs> can't be sure but this is the era where people built bumpers to be used okay great in France because in Paris or Paris people use their bumpers to push cars around when they park all right so that's somehow called a Ford F model G model and that's where we start the 964 or 930 era okay this is right hand drive you see the consistency with the dials the five dials are there, the horizontal dash is over there, right? and it has always been. Yeah. And you can put your kids at the back, that's the beauty about, about Porsche 911s. Now, let me explain a little bit about Europe in the 60s and 70s. In the 60s and 70s, the typical family car in Europe is a small hatchback with two doors and there are four seats inside. Okay, the, the typical family car, be it a Fiat Cinquecento, or a, a mini, you know, they all comes with two doors and little seats behind. And the kids would just climb to the back or any friends or family. It's a normal thing in, in Europe back then. So four doors is a kind of luxury back in those era. So cars like these, cars like the 911 in the 60s and the 70s, you know, or even up to the 80s are perfectly fine family cars. I, I kid you, no, I'm not joking, it's perfectly fine to be perceived as a family car in those era. We have a large boot up front and then the engine at the back, okay? Now this 964, only the turbocharged model is called the, uh, wait, I, I, I may be wrong. Maybe, the, I don't know whether it's the turbocharged one is called 964 or the turbocharged one is called 930. Yeah, the turbo one is called 964, the non-turbo one is called 930. That is the huge wing with the integrated radiators up front. Okay, this gives the classic Porsche look. I think this two generation really established that classic Porsche look, you know. I mean, back then it looks like a squashed beetle, right? Especially the 356. And then now with this classic iconic uh, silhouette with this wing at the back, Anybody can tell it is a Porsche. And if you do not know, this whole piece is soft touch. It is soft touch, this entire piece. 
rubber spoiler. Right? Imagine how heavy it is. <laughs> right? So and then the theme continues. Look at that. Very nice looking dash. In fact, this is the dash that I preferred the most amongst the generations. I mean, uh, the 930 and the 964 dash is the one that I like most. 993s, their value is going up like mad now, okay? Yeah, 993s. This is like the last generation of uh, air cooled Porsches, okay? After that, they went to water cool. Okay, very, very nice interior as well. You know, this has a, you know, a strong 90s feel to it, so it's nice. You get modern touches, right? Lovely leather, soft Napa leather inside. And you get a little Porsche logo patch there on the handbrakes. And it smells good. The car smells good. The car looks good. You know, lovely design too. At the back. Yeah. Beautiful looking, beautiful. So, after this, they went to the most hated of all 911 generations, the 996. Not only they have that teardrop shape, or like a fried egg, right? Where the yolk got burst. Uh, they also went to water cool in this one. And this car, right, uh, for non Porsche aficionados, Sometimes you glance one without the wings, without everything, right? You, you would have thought you looked like you were looking at a Boxster with a hard top on it because they look so similar. This is also the era whereby uh, Porsche was saved by Wendelin Vida King, okay? This is the era whereby the new CEO who came into Porsche, he saw the state of Porsche is in, almost a bankrupt company, and he spearheaded the Boxster, right? And the Boxster has that, that little teardrop uh, design. So does the 911. And this is the era whereby Porsche really flipped their fortunes and really coming up from there on. You can see even the, the wheels sit in. I mean, it takes an acquired taste to really like this car. But everybody said that this one is now beginning to get appreciated, okay? But it remains the most hated Porsche. Uh, underrated, yes. Everybody says it's underrated. That means it's still a great car. And uh, I think Matt Watson from Carwell bought one, right? And then that's the 997. This is uh, still one of my favorite 911s. And I love the interior design. I love how it looks. Yeah, this was the era where... Yeah, the 997 is great. <laughs> This was the era where Porsche had the spat with uh, Nissan GTR about Nurburgring times, okay? So Wendelin Wiedeking came in, launched the Boxer, and then after that, they, 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 they have good financial, and then they went on to the uh, Cayenne, and the rest are history. Porsche is now one of the most profitable car companies in the world, uh, with the most advanced uh, technology, manufacturing and all that oh little thing you may not know during that era Wendelin Vida King flew in a bunch of ex Toyota engineers and they went and scrutinized the factory floor changed the production line changed the system changed how Porsches were made so technically speaking within the VW group Porsche were the first ones to sort of employ Toyota manufacturing system okay and uh, I mean, it's the testament now you can see uh, 911s, all 911s are extremely reliable. Okay, that's the 997. And look at the dash. The five dials, they have sort of condensed it a bit, you know. All of them became half dials and all that. And of course, this one looks just as new as day one. Now, the one they put here, this is technically called the 991.2 in the Porsche community because that's the facelift. The pre-facelift, you have that shaped um, daytime running lights on the bumper and uh, these louvers are not that direction, they're this direction. And uh, you look at the tail lamp, this is the 3D one, the one with the 3D effect, right? So when the 991 first came out, it was a flat, slim tail light and it looks really good. 
okay still looks just as fresh just as new as day one it's been around for some time the market and uh this is the portrait interior that that i really love you know it started with the panamera with all the virtu buttons and all that and i love this generation's interior okay, but it's already thoroughly modern by now all right and the cars have grown they have grown so much especially the 991 generation it has become so much larger than the 997 and actually the classic Porsche silhouette uh, after the uh, 993 is sort of really really changed since the 996 and then the 997 991 they have changed a lot so now it looks not as distinctive as the older ones the older ones have a very upright um, windscreen area a very drastic drop towards the back end and these ones they slope instead of dropping see the old ones right they sort of drop from here onwards they went all the way down these ones they slope and uh, of course today's star the 992 the all new brand new super high tech uh, 911 now the first thing you will notice about this car is that the hood, the bonnet. You see, Porsche always have this classic. Look at the bulge on the headlamp. The bulge on the headlamp. The bulge on the headlamp. The bulge, right? This has always been a very classic Porsche design language. <laughs> see, this is so apparent, right? Look at that. Right, the headlamps are there. The wheel arches. The huge bulge and then the bonnet slopes all the way down. Okay. This has always been a classic design theme that is prevalent in Cayenne, in Panamera, in all of them. And the great part is, is that when you're driving in the car, when you're driving, when you are overtaking people, when you're trying to overtake people in the track, it is so easy to judge your front end. Okay, this may be accidental. I mean, the benefits of this may be accidental. It's not something that they designed from the day one that, oh, it will be great on the track, you know. It just happens so, but but you ask every Porsche driver, they love the bulge, okay, <laughs> because really when you're going all out in the track and all that, right, you can go so close. Um, I mean, for us non-professional drivers, uh, so they, they ease it, still there, still there, very much less so now. Now the whole hood, the whole bonnet has been, has bulged up. You can barely see the bulge. It is still there, but it's no longer so significant. And they have those lines running on the hood now. And this is one cut line across, one straight one. Look at this, this one is still very pleasing to the eye, whereby the, the bonnet runs on that way, okay? So this one is like, it bulges up already. And then they squared off the bottom part. Look at these. So this is where they house all the radars, all the advanced stuff, the two radiators there. And then it's just horizontal, one piece. Okay. Look at these, these new lights. They call it x -Site. This is interesting. This could be just some materials that actually guides the light. I mean, it reflects it that way, so it looks like light rays coming at you. Very nice touch. And back then, only turbo models get the four LED uh, uh, lighting signature. Now, it be has become a Porsche signature, not just a turbo, not just exclusive to the turbos. Right. Oh, the dash looks in looks beautiful. I'll have a look at that later. Now, take a look at this. Interesting. Um, this spoiler is very very interesting so this is now part of the body part of the body itself you can hardly tell there's a spoiler hidden underneath and then the whole thing raises up okay there is a lower position where it's more straight that one is actually in eco mode whereby um, it, it, is, it, it, it reduces the turbulence at the back and the car becomes more slippery love this touch this how they integrated the third brake lights there and then the lighting signature of you see if it is not conjoined if it is not conjoined this qualifies as a third break right or oh, this is a third break like there's a lot i don't know so that's one over here there's one over here but this one is one line across as a signature like very nice so 
I guess this whole new design theme that you can see on the um, on the on the Panamera, on the Macan, it will be across the board from now on. And uh, this is interesting. Now they put a 911 badge in front of the Carrera badge, which uh, they integrated together. And this one spells 911 Carrera GTS and that one 911 Carrera 4S. Okay, at the bottom here you have the oval pipes. Okay, still the whole thing is there, the whole chunk. Okay, now let's look at the interior. This interior is okay. Porsche always makes magnificent interiors. Their build quality is second to none. Their fit and finish second to none, and it has always been very clean, very nice. So they come with Bremester sound systems, and um, all these are nicely wrapped in leather. Okay, there's a two tier, and uh, of course you can't put bottles here. Who bothers to put bottles over there, right? But the touch is fantastic. It feels really good the interior now they have turned everything to digital however the ref counter it is still in physical form right you still get a classic uh, analog dial which which is lovely that's a lovely lovely touch because they did not uh, just turn everything into digital so that's really really nice all right let's have a look at this interior so where you release the bonnet the boot so some skip plates over here now let's have a look at this interior the inlays now you are able to spec inlays on your Porsche so you can see these these are sort of aluminium pattern inlays right but I'm sure you can spec wood over there you can spec wood over there you can spec carbon all kinds of stuff the steering wheel is all new and it looks tiny and I like the fact from what I see here it has a very thin rim okay let's come inside here now this is where the starter is now you'll be wondering why Porsche never had a push start button okay this is this is the uh, let, let me tell you this this is a left-hand drive car okay and in the left-hand drive car when you come into the car the seat belt is on your left okay if the seat belt is on your left you come inside here let me show you guys this. When you step inside a Porsche, the moment you come in, you use your right hand to pull the seat belt so that your left hand twists the car. Why? This is a Le Mans tradition, okay? It is in Le Mans that Porsche kicks Ferrari's ass. It is in Le Mans that Porsche forced Ferrari to sell half of the company out to fund a car that they hope to build, to beat the 917 which they did not and half the company was owned by Fiat after that so Le Mans is something that is crucial for Porsche why because when Ferdinand Pieck designed the 917 that time Porsche is a nobody nobody cares about Porsche nobody knows who they are but it is, it is in Le Mans when they kick the ass of Ferrari where Porsche gained the status they have now today. So this Le Mans tradition of twisting the engine must be kept, okay, no matter how. They won't go into a push start button. I like how they keep this tradition there. This is lovely, all right? So the drive mode thing is still here. The steering wheel feels great. And all this will be light up when you start the car. And you can see this little gear knob now. Why? Because it is now shift by wire. And these toggle buttons all feel really great to the touch. Okay, so you have the aircon vents mounted low here. Digital, digital, but this one is still analog. Very, very nice. Remember the watch I showed you guys that day? Analog dials of Porsche will always have the rear part sticking out. That was uh, shown in that watch as well. All right, you have electronic parking brakes. This is a compartment. Hello, Shukran. Hi. Hello. You believe card? Okay, there's a button there. A little compartment over here. You have the SD card slots, two USB ports. Everything is there. I love this little lever. Very, very nice. Okay. And uh, you still have this. You get this when you spec this. When you spec this, the Sport Chrono package, you get to go 0 to 100 
faster by 0.2 seconds. So remember the timing that I uh, showed earlier on in the live video. 3.4 seconds achievable from just 450 horsepower is unheard of 15 years ago. Okay, but now with technology, lovely. I'm surprised it's not a frameless uh, rear view mirror. Now the girth of the steering wheel is is the type where I like, you know. It's not like a BMW M Sport steering wheel where it's super thick, right? This is just nice. This is just nice. The size of the steering wheel is just nice and the girth is also very nice. So that what that means is that a guy can drive it nicely, a woman as well. Because like those steering wheels in the M Sport steering wheel, they are too thick for a small petite woman's hand, right? So you have the... Uh, um, adaptive cruise control stuffs over here this one changes your drive mode and this one has a see-through effect there over there okay they've always had that but then now the way they integrate it is really really nice right this is a lovely interior okay have a look at that and you pull the strap that's the rear seats for your kids this is the reason why 911 still outsells the AMG GTS it outsells the i8 it outsells the R8 that's the reason because like I mentioned just now back in 60s and 70s European family cars only have two doors they're used to that all right they put their whole family in there so technically speaking this car can be used as a family car for Europeans they, they're perfectly fine with that that's a large compartment over here all right so lovely and the radiators are the back all right guys so there you have it this is the full walk around of generations of Porsche 911s. Cheers guys.